thing to mark. Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to betray, be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Holy and gracious God, I speak in your name and in your presence, asking that my words would be pleasing to you, guided by your Spirit, and that the hearts and minds of your people would be open to hear you speak. Through Christ our Lord, I pray. Amen. Who is wise and understanding among you? But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, so is the reading from uh, the letter of James. The, the liturgy follows the, the gospel text, or the gospel text is chosen to follow the theme of the day of the liturgy. However you want to look at it, it's the gospel that determines the theme. And every once in a while, the other readings match up to that, but, but that's the, we, the, the lectionary tries to do that, but is not always successful. This morning, this text from James could be considered a commentary on the gospel. Who is wise and understanding or discerning among you? But if there is bitter envy and selfish ambition, it is though it is devilish, James says. So, Jesus does, as a wisdom teacher, as the one who is wise and understanding, he does a very unusual thing in pulling a child out of the crowd, standing the child in the presence of everyone, and then hugging the child. Now, treating children tenderly was common in the day, but in that time children were not thought of as object lessons of devout life or religious life. And in fact, the word for child is sometimes the word for servant. And that more closely identifies how children were thought of. And it's not, it's not bad, necessarily. It's just that mortality rate was high and children were vulnerable and dependent and socially marginalized. And so they were not typically examples of, of devout life. Not so with Jesus. And as a wisdom teacher, he, he elevates everything by starting with the least of these. 
Now, if you recall last week's, I think it was last week or the week before, I get confused, but somewhere recently, we were doing the gospel text in which, in which Peter, remember, identified Jesus as the Messiah, and then Jesus went on to say he was the son of humanity who would be rejected and killed and raised, and Peter rebu- pulled Jesus aside and rebuked him, and then, and then Jesus rebukes Peter, and, and it launches this section in Mark's gospel in which the hard-hearted disciples simply do not understand. And our text this morning just picks right up on that theme. They're traveling to Capernaum, and Jesus was teaching them that the Son of Humanity must be rejected and killed, and they do not understand. Now, interestingly, the trip through Galilee was probably several days, and it's easily lost in the wording, but but in the Greek text, it's clear that this was teaching means repeatedly. He's repeatedly teaching them and they do not understand. Now, we have identified that, and Mark's Gospel identifies that as the hard-hearted disciples. And Mark's Gospel also identifies that as the work of the Satan that shut off their understanding. It's not um, without note that James says it's devilish. To be like the disciples. To be motivated by selfish ambition. Now bear with me. Everything about the disciples' response to Jesus' teaching of humility. This isn't the first time. They don't understand that he's to be crucified because they think he's the all-powerful Messiah. And so... Jesus is talking to them about self-giving, sacrificial love. And they just can't get it. And, and, and that's not unusual for human beings. <laughs> I mean, we sort of build our worldview and then, and then work really, really hard to make sure nobody messes with it. And when data comes along that would confront my worldview, I defend my worldview. I justify it. I explain it. I can go on and on and on about it. And, and not even hear a different worldview. But by this point, the disciples are fed up. Here Jesus is again for days teaching them this is going to happen. They do not understand and they're afraid to ask him. Don't want to hear any more, Jesus. We've heard enough. We don't get it. We're confused. And by the way, when we spoke up before, you rebuked us, so we're done. We're not, we're not asking any more questions. It makes sense, doesn't it? So, Jesus doesn't leave them alone. And I love this. I love this. Because, I mean, they're no different than me. They're afraid. They have a worldview. They don't like God confronting their worldview. And, and, they're, and, and it's too hard. And it's too challenging. And it's too threatening. And so I stop asking. But the good news is Jesus doesn't stop asking me in return. And so there he is. They, 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 they were afraid to ask, so Jesus asks them. And on the way, while, they're, while Jesus has been teaching this, they have reverted back to what they are comfortable talking about. Who's the greatest among them? That's the worldview they do understand, and they like talking about those things. And by the way, they're with the man. So it's among themselves. Who's the greatest? We're the, we're, you know, all of us are great because we've... We've, we're following the guy. But which of us is the greatest? That's what they're, they're arguing about. And by the way, if you think that I'm overplaying this, I'm not, I promise you I'm not. It continues. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating. The very next story, they have some other people are casting out demons in Jesus' name, and they're going, hey, you can't do that. You're not with us. Well, who do you think you are? They just... So Jesus asks them, what were you talking about? Now, interestingly, 
that God opposes the proud and exalts the humble was not news. Jesus is just taking it to a degree they, that they can't get. But, but when Jesus asks them, what were you talking about? They're silent because they're embarrassed. They know they're not supposed to be worried about which is the greatest. So they just, they just get silent. I love that. Don't you lie to me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I'll just go hide, you know, I, I just love it. So, in that context, Jesus says, the one who would be first would be last of all and servant of all. And then he pulls a child. And by the way, he sits down that's, that's the customary uh, posture of a teacher was to, was to be seated. And then he brings a child, and it's probably not an infant, but, but a fairly young child. It's hard to know. Into the midst, hugs the child and says, whoever receives a child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not just me, but the one who sent me. And that becomes the model for being lowly. Now, part of the challenge of this text is it's the first in a triptych. Three episodes about children or little ones. And, and the third one of those comes up in our lectionary again in two weeks, and so I'm going to pick up this same theme two weeks from this morning. This is part one of a two-part series. But, but the second in the triptych is when they, they, have, they have forbidden these other people from, from casting out demons they, in Jesus' name. They come to Jesus, John comes to him and says, Lord, there is these other dudes casting out demons in your name, but we stopped them. <laughs> and Jesus says, oh, no, no. Those who aren't against us are for us. And then he says, be careful. Be very careful. Lest you cause one of the least of these who believe in me to stumble. The child is still there. There's, there's nothing to suggest that, that the child has left, that they're not still in that moment. And so what Jesus is really doing is I, he's really saying, be like this child. You're among the least of these. And in case we didn't get it, it's two stories later that we have the third teaching about children. And he says, he says, unless you receive the presence of God as a child, you will not enter it at all. Literally, it's the kingdom of God, but I understand that to be the presence of God. Unless you receive. Now, just think with me a moment. Suddenly, putting all this together about children. Children don't earn anything. They just are. And they are dependent and vulnerable. And Jesus is saying, become like that and receive the gift of God's presence. Receive the gift of your life. See, they're all hung up in earning their life. They're hung up in being great. They're hung up in achieving. They're hum hung up in making something of themselves. And they're locked in. It's, it's satanic. It's devilish. They're locked in when, when life is a gift. Receive your life as a gift. You are loved of God simply because you are. And then if we can just be with that a little bit, just a little bit, in our prayers and in our story and hopefully in the community of the story. We start to get it that to receive you is to receive Jesus. 
to receive Jesus is to receive the one who sent Jesus. And if it's true to receive you, it's true to receive me. What is my life? It is Christ. What is my life? It is God. Who am I? Divine. That's what life is. And it's a gift. It can't possibly be earned. Any attempt to earn it is to deny it as gift. Children of God, created in God's image, alive with divine life. And for those who believe, that life is just profoundly awakened as we move more and more into faith. That's who we are. Why trade that for some kind of success? Some silliness of what I can produce for myself rather than to receive this remarkable gift of life. And there, there is freedom. Remarkable freedom. And from that place, this, that place of freedom, that place of receiving it, not achieving it, from there it just flourishes. And that's the place where we can become servants because I have nothing to achieve. It's the profoundest understanding of stewardship. I'm a steward of this life. And all the gifts, yes, there are, there are powerful gifts of being a human being. But at all the energy changes when those gifts are exercised from a life received rather than a status attained and achieved. It's all the difference in the world. Last week, I was sitting right there, and it was, it was uh, I, think the, I think the communion anthem was playing. I'm not sure. I think the choir was singing the communion anthem. And, um, and Deborah's grandson, Alec Brennan, was, was actually standing on the back of the pew right there. He's four years old. And, 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 his, and his caregiver, Samantha, was holding him, and he was standing on the back of the pew. And when I saw him, I just said, yes. Alec is comfortable being himself in our sanctuary, and nobody was scolding him. I love that. I loved it. Promise. So then, as I'm looking at him, he starts going like this. And by the way, I didn't recognize him. I've been gone for a while. I didn't recognize him. He's just all over the place going like this. And I'm looking. I can't figure it out because I don't know who he is. Later, I learn. It's his mother sings in the choir, and he's come in, and he sees his mom right there, and he's just going nuts waving at her. And, and this all came rushing back to me as I, as I was preparing for this sermon. And, and when I prepare for a sermon, I, I try to begin by being present to the text myself. And the Holy Spirit was asking me, could I receive my life like that? Could I be like that, full of the joy and the wonder and just the freedom of this, of this child? And I, you, you know what I said, don't you? Nope. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> thank you, Holy Spirit, but I got, it's too stressful. And of course, that, that's the real conversation, isn't it? Can I receive my life like this child? I shared the story with Deborah, which is when I found out who he was. And Deborah says, oh, Jim, let me tell you about Alec. He, he asked his parents recently if he could come to church to see Gigi. That, that's her name. He, she's his grandmother. And my, my maternal great-grandmother was Gigi, so I, I get this. So Alec wants to come see Gigi. So they say, okay, they come to church, and they, and they see Deborah, Gigi. And then Alec says, but I want to go to church. And so they, they go, well, okay. So they come into the sanctuary. Alec tells them to kneel, goes up behind the altar, makes believe he's celebrating Holy Communion, comes down to them and says, Jesus. Cool. Say, say. <laughs> what? I, I, I missed it. What was it? Amen. Yeah. Could we be like that? Other end of the least of these. 
Betsy's father died several years ago of Parkinson's. And there's Alec. I'm, is that Alec? That's him. I love it. Good morning, Alec. Thank you for, for having a story to tell. By the way, I got permission to tell the story from the parents. You okay, Alec, that I told your story? Thank you. So Betsy's father died several years ago of Parkinson's. And toward the end of his life, Betsy would, would visit his parents and, and help put him to bed at times. And, and I, I, I might not do this well, but he'd get under the covers and just snuggle in and go, whoa, 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 whoa. And now Betsy and I do that often. We slip into the covers and draw next to each other and just go, whoa, 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 whoa. Can we receive the goodness of life? Can we simply be divine presence, children of God, and receive the gift of our lives? And in that, receive the gift of God's presence. The domain of of God. Amen.